that's supposed to be coming in today at 6.40. It was supposed to come in today at 12, and it was supposed to come in yesterday at, uh, what was it? Two. Like 2 p.m. or something. So a lot of supposed to's, but... Um, thing that we forget. Oh. I forgot. <laughs> so my husband exchanged some euros for me while I was doing morning errands. Like a good husband. And then he forgot it in the car. So now we don't have euros on us. And we'll have to go with terrible airport exchange rates. We're gonna die you guys. It's like 6 a.m. We're at LAX. We don't leave until like closer to noon, but I don't think it's worth leaving the air first. Must proceed to gate 134 for a media boarding of your aircraft. At this point, your seats are subject to cancellation and your luggage is subject to being. So, before our flight to Paris, we decided to eat some pizza because that was uh, what looked good at that time at the airport, and it was definitely one of the better pizzas out there. Um, this picture here is a drink that they served on the flight and after this flight we don't have pictures or video because we were super stressed out when we landed because there was a long line in customs and we didn't know if we were gonna make it on time and so the next clip you see is us pretty much running <laughs> and making it but we made it guys we freaking made it so we didn't make it earlier, or we did, and then they canceled the flight. So now we're on our second attempt of getting to Barcelona today. I don't trust it until the gate, that we pull away from the gate, man. So our flight just got canceled because of the strike. Air France. We are trying to look for our baggages now. So, we family out here in Barcelona airport. I think we're up to nine hours delayed total. So we're just hanging out at the baggage claim and hoping something turns up. Spoiler alert, nothing came up besides these Filipinos. We were too drained to take videos and document what was going on, but we eventually arrived in Barcelona and these were the first few pictures that we took. And this is our Airbnb. Is this the main one? Or the one? Oh, okay. Um, this is the Santa Maria del Mar. Oh, uh, okay. So, Big money. so the next morning, we still did not have our luggage, but decided to try to make the best of it and still go exploring. Our neighborhood was very walkable, surprisingly. Nice surprise. Um, and there was a lot of stuff going on. There was some random parade. We weren't even sure what the reason was. Um, and we found a cute little cafe that actually had a string of, I guess it was a chain, um, throughout Barcelona that we tried out our first breakfast. It was good. Um, and then we popped into a supermarket that kind of reminded me of Whole Foods. We didn't get anything here, but it was nice to look around and see this weird dismembered jamon leg. Day two, still no luggage. We tried giving a call in the morning to see what was going on with the luggage, but no dice. So we went ahead with our reservation that we already had to see the Sagrada Familia. So the famous, I guess the crowning work of Gaudí as far as cultural landmarks go. So it is still unfinished, but there are towers that you can take pre-book tours on so that you can climb up the staircase 
take a look at Barcelona from um, above and we just spent a good amount of time maybe an hour or two in here just looking around at all the artwork reading up on things and watching the light change through all the stained glass but afterwards we're hungry found the closest and most highly rated churreria and got some churros <laughs> you're not mark weems <laughs> uh, ray weems <laughs> got up with plans to have breakfast at the Santa Catarina marketplace we went walking for maybe 20 minutes before we got there um, with plans to have breakfast slash brunch at bar Joan it was highly recommended but the things that we saw on the menu were things like cod fritters and full-on spicy sausages and coffee with whiskey but it turned out to be a delicious meal no. I did ask for a coffee with ice, but then yeah. she said milk, so I was like, okay. <laughs> this is black coffee with whiskey. So, we are having a sausage. I think it's like a local sausage made out of, I want to say pork. And then these are seasoned mushrooms. There's a pork kebab and some more bread. We had some cod fritters and uh, bread with tomatoes. Sorry for the whole thing. Yeah, no worries. Uh, what I want to do is you just is check for your gear in back in the next hour or so as the main office just opened. You may receive a confirming email for the account. If not, I'm just going to send a message over to them mm -hmm. and let them know that you're trying to file a claim. So you creating an account, filling in that first page, but you haven't received a confirming email, and I'll just have them respond back to that. Gotcha. Um, also, I have one more uh, just kind of general question. Uh, sorry, what was your name again? Uh, my name's Peter. This guy always does this. He asks people their names and everyone is always startled. Like, why you wanna know my name? Oh, Peter, Peter. Thanks, Peter. Uh, just been kind of crippled with our scheduling here because um, our bags aren't here yet. And it's been three days uh, since we've landed and we still haven't got our bags. And you know, there's some essential things in there that we need, um, but we don't have it. so. Uh, we ended up needing to buy new pairs of clothes, um, and yeah, but we're gonna try, um, try to make the best of what we got. So we're gonna stick close to the house because one of the bags are supposed to be coming in, um, but they haven't called yet, and it's been past, and it's way past the time that time frame that they told us it was gonna be here, and. Um, in terms of the other baggage, um, we've talked to Air France and um, it's just been a whirlwind of not good news or no news at all about where it's at. Um, but it's supposed to be coming in today at 6.40. It was supposed to come in today at 12 and it was supposed to come in yesterday at, uh, what was it? Two. Like 2 p.m. or something. So. A lot of supposed to's, but um, 
Yeah, hopefully we get in within, you know, tomorrow. Because um, otherwise, I think that's almost half the trip that we've had no luggage. So we had to go pick up uh, clothes. But just for like a, uh, a day's worth because we assumed that our bags were coming in. But, you know, it hasn't yet. So we're probably going to have to pick up more and um, work around the scheduling. Um, I think there's a bunch of stuff that we can check out around the area and uh, yeah, make the best of what we have in hand. See you guys soon. Here you can see Joss's expression and another expression of frustration. After we walked around for a little bit, we were looking to see what we could have for dinner and this place came up which was um, I believe it's a winery but they also serve us uh, bread with plethora of toppings so in these next few clips uh, we're just going to be talking about it's not too dry. this place so after finding this little dinner spot we did order the recommended bread appetizer it's, I think it's called like pan, pan tomat, something like that. I'm sorry if I'm butchering it. But essentially it's tomato bread where you take a tomato and some olive oil and some garlic and you spread it on bread. You have to. This is basically a Barcelona staple and our reader here is instructing us on how to so do the tomato. Not too much, that garlic is very strong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then the tomato, you have to call the tomato like that, not like that. Okay. Yeah. And. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Do you not like olives? I'm sure there's a little bit of that here. There's a lingua somewhere in there. It kind of looks like lingua right there. Like yeah, embedded cut. in the big thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. Flat. Oops, so let's say. Chili. Okay. Okay, so we're making the. Was it the. Pa um, tumangue or whatever? It's like potato and tomato on bread. So you rub it with garlic and then you take a tomato half and then you rub it on top and until there's like nothing in it almost. Okay. I guess. <laughs> Make sure you get all of that business. Yeah. And then you put some olive oil on it. I felt like he was very liberal. But that looks good. And then a little bit of, I think it's coarse salt. And that's the end. That's it. And that's it. I'm all scared by this. Well. Is this a stinky one? I think it's the stinky one. The rind looks like it's moldy. Wait, I should try it without any jelly on it. Yeah, try them wrong. <laughs> And yeah. people who don't like blue cheese, it's very blue cheesy, so I think that's why I'm like... Oh. Check out this place though. I remember walking to this gelato place after dinner, and it was late. And I was thinking, oh my god, someone's going to attack us or pickpocket us on the way to this place. But, they had a lot of flavors, they were pretty good. Um, not my favorite gelato place of all of the dessert places we tried in Barcelona, but the creme catalana was pretty good. So that night we got a notification that they tried to deliver our bags. We had them scheduled to deliver it and all that time we were waiting in the 
in the house and um, we didn't get any notification so at that point we were just kind of upset and you know kind of frustrated as anyone would be so we decided to call them and they said they didn't know where it was or it, the, the shipping company or the people that were supposed to deliver it were, is a different company from the airport so what happened was that um, we talked to the airport people and they mentioned that uh, most likely it's going to go back to the airport so that night we actually got a cab and went to the airport to see if our bags were there um, and turns out that they didn't have any answers for us So here we are, again at the airport. We're not going home yet. We're here to try to pick up our luggage from the baggage, the delayed baggage office at Ground Force. Hello, good morning. Say hi to the vlog. No? Guys, we're reunited with the baggage. After three long days of not having our bags. But it's okay, we went shopping, we'll get reimbursed. It's right here, it's finally here, guys. He's updating the instance. After oh, guys, three long days of not having three our days. bags. But it's okay, we went shopping, and we'll get reimbursed. It's right here, it's finally here, guys. Now I can change my underwear. I've been using the same one for three days. And with that kerfuffle over, we were off to Montserrat. Is that how you pronounce it? After making it back from the airport, we had to rush to meet our tour group. We almost didn't make it, guys. But we did, we got on the bus and went on our 30 mile journey to the Montserrat Monastery. It is a popular day trip. There's lots of tourists there, but it was so misty that you kind of couldn't see everyone that was there. It was a nice relaxed adventure exploring Montserrat. There are some shops at the base of the monastery um, before you walk up the steps to the abbey. So. In the shops, I don't know if the monks make the pastry, the kokis that is associated with the monastery, but I think the monks definitely do make the souvenir alcohol that you can take home that's flavored. But yeah, otherwise just exploring the sanctuary and the sites. We didn't get a chance to catch the famous boy choir that is sometimes performing inside of the monastery walls. And also, we weren't going to stand in line for the Black Madonna, which wrapped around for like six hours. But I'm getting off topic. Would recommend. Here's that pastry I was talking about, the kokis. You can get it plain, which is buttered, plain or buttered with sugar, or you can get it with chocolate. All delicious, but we wanted the OG. What are you eating? That's a model. <laughs> After our visit to the monastery, we headed down the mountain for a farmhouse lunch that was provided by our tour group with our small band of I want to say everyone was kind of like 20 somethings early 30s and we even got to celebrate the 31st birthday of our new friend Rashadi he's a nurse ICU nurse in Belgium after a pretty big lunch, we got to stretch our legs a little bit, take a quick look around while the sun was setting, and take some photos. 
from there I believe it was about an hour ride back to the city where we saw some Christmas lights and just found our way home so that we could crash for a couple of hours. We're going out for some late night tapas because we have our farmhouse lunch around two. So let's see what's open. It's, I don't know, I'm anticipating cold, but this guy's never cold. We're going out for some late night uh, dinner. We went somewhere, I don't know where. We hungry. So we're at Bar Ruby, which is, I guess, it's kind of a place for. Like older teenagers to like 30s people in the hood that were at in the board slash gothic district. We're just here getting some drinks. You can't even see the drinks because it's so red in here. But what'd you get? I got a mart. Oh, I got a Martin Miller's. I don't know what that is. Definitely gin though. It's all right. I got a strawberry mojito just because. It looked yummy. Bar Ruby didn't have sandwiches, so we got sandwiches. <laughs> Here is us eating sandwiches. This is day something. We are headed to Park Well. I feel like there's a different way of pronouncing it more Barcelonian, Catalan. Trying to figure it out. At this point, things were rolling and things were going good, you know, spirits were high, everything's going great. So, this is us just strolling through Park Guell, if that's the correct pronunciation. Yay, us. Hey guys, so we made it to Park Guell. I think I'm saying that wrong still, but. <laughs> Cool stuff! We're gonna go and look through the entire monumental zone path and yeah, I guess hopefully it's take some photos before it gets too crowded. People will be having photo shoots here at Parkwell. Us too. This is the photo I'm gonna show our children, telling them this is your mom when we went to Spain. We are up top at Park Well and we are at the Serpentine Bench. So it's one of Gaudi's most Instagrammable spots now. But basically it's like colorful mosaic tile and it's called the Serpentine Bench because um, it kind of makes waves like a, like a slithering snake. And it's turned into a free-for-all for these bench photos as you can see. There are pigeons always making noises around here, man. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what these pigeons are doing. But what a beautiful park. After we hit all the necessary stops at the park, took all the necessary photos for Instagram, we hopped in a questionable cab and found ourselves back in the city for brunch, lunch, brunch, lunch. Are you ready for lunch brunch? Me too. Look at this churro nut breakfast sandwich. What are we doing? We're gonna eat some dinner tapas. This we both slept for like the entire afternoon. Well, like I slept half the afternoon because I was filing our claim for our luggage, which hopefully gets approved soon. Because I literally gave them every single document, <laughs> every single document. I scanned it with the cam scanner and everything. Thanks, son. After some wandering, we came across Bar Pla, which happened to be one of the recommendations that we had had for Barcelona in terms of food stops. We tried out a couple of things that was some rare beef that you see over there mixed in with some bell peppers, I think. Um, it was interesting. Um, sushi, not the greatest, 
However, they did have some good meat bugs. We wandered down to the Christmas market after dinner just to take a look at some things. Should we go the one? shops were all closing, and those are caganers who poop in your nativity scene. Took some photos by the cathedral that happened to be right outside of the Christmas market and called it a night. Hey guys, so another day in Barcelona. It's day six. We are on our way to the... Hold on. <laughs> hey, check out the outfit of the day though. More poses. Just out walking to the market. It's pretty early, like 8 30, 9 o'clock. I don't know what this is. I think it's a library, maybe. We are currently at one of the markets. Um, I just want to show you what they got. So we're at the Pinocho bar, and this guy is about to try this. I think it's squid and white bean, but it's so good. Try it. Hot. No. Specially requested. So this is where we are leaving. I think so. The market opens at eight. Mm. So pro tip: come before nine. I'm super early. Just got busy. Yeah, just like got nuts. All these people were not here. We are in the. You just told us where we were. Where? The Plaza de España. I'm sorry, correction, it is the Plaza de España. So, the Spanish square, I guess. Status, huh? Still cold. What are we but off to? Grab some ramen for lunch and then get back on the blue line so that we can do more of our tour on the city bus. Yeah, we on the I think we waited about 45 minutes to an hour. Um, pro tip would be to come as soon as they open. We wasted some time at the Apple store. <laughs> I think you can eat your own nigiri with your hand, no? Okay. Probably eat this with uh, hands anyway. Yeah. No, no, you don't have to wait. You can start eating. No, I got gyoza. Yeah. Pork belly. Good. He's really excited to be eating rice, guys. That's why he's smiling. Pickle. Oh. Or, uh. Oh, this wine angle is so good, huh? How's it? 
Shigoa. Mm -hmm. Tastes like 7 Eleven from Japan. Yeah. What was the last one? This thing is so stable, too. So, this is the beer, guys. How's it? Standard kind of like I feel like I've had it at other Japanese restaurants as as good as this. Go for it, I'm ready. Oh yeah, with the kaitama. I mean, it's Ipuro is a five, though. Oh. So you know. Yeah. Uh, I think I'd give it like a four. Like I feel like the broth is super subtle, and like the noodles have like a good texture, but maybe the broth could have been like a little bit like more distinct, like in terms of like what it tasted like. It just tasted like good, but I wasn't sure why. That was good. It yeah. wasn't too thick. Wasn't too uh, spread out. I guess. Also, you weren't allowed to, or you weren't allowed to, but there were no condiments to put in your your broth to like customize it. So like, you couldn't like add more soy sauce or like add more spice or whatever it's fine though oh, yeah. I think anything on top of that or in it would have been too too yeah. nuts would recommend um being here at opening time yes just be here and make sure you don't have any plans right after or you know at least be open because there's still a line right after we left well that and like we were supposed to be here at 1 30 but then we decided to go look at some shoes and then so we got here at like 1 45 like 15 minutes after they opened and then there was like already a line that was like 15 deep so be prepared okay. here we are in the placa catalunya or catalan square we're heading to the back to the bus Hi guys, so we're out at dinner right now. Um, we took maybe like a two, two and a half hour nap after getting off the bus tour that got too cold, <laughs> like way too cold. Um, so we're at um, this place called Mimos, which is like literally down the street from our Airbnb. Like we walked out the door and then walked like 200 feet and it was right there. Food here was super delicious. Look at the size of these freaking prawns. Check the spread, guys. Some fried leek, calamari, ham and cheese fritters. Oh no, sorry, cheese fritters with honey glaze. And then these freaking ginormous prawns. Yeah, Bismarck. She is. Took a one <laughs> oh, I was like small enough. There's juices.
This is Mimo's. Oh, oh we are. Oh, he's juicy. We just need rice, you guys. We were on the way home, and this guy asked me if we wanted to go to this event. Something like that. He hooked on his leg onto my leg, and he started dancing. And um, that was it, man. Like, Joss was just like... Hun, I think he tried to pickpocket you, and so I tried to feel my pants, and um, she was right, it wasn't there. We checked the restaurant, which was about 20 yards away, and they didn't find anything. They were very sympathetic and uh, willing to help us call the police and, and things like that, but, um, you know, it was long gone. So the next morning, we had to file a police report because we needed those papers and, and that proof to... Uh, give to our insurance company but before that we needed to grab some churros before the day started we are at Churria I think you pronounce it like Dana and they are supposed to have like the best churros um, on, in this part of the town so we're gonna try it mm. 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 These are the winner for the best ones in Barcelona. How come? These are crispier. Welcome to our last full day in Barcelona, guys. Kind of a late start this morning because I wasn't feeling too hot yesterday or last night. But um, we're off to the Arc de Triomphe, their version of it. And yeah, we're going to start our day. Because it was our last day in Barcelona, I insisted that we had to stop at Bakery Hoffman and I'd heard so many things about this place and their amazing croissants. So we just came out of um, Hoffman Patisserie. Um, they're known for their mascarpone croissants, like it's a stuffed croissant. I'm not really big on mascarpone cheese usually, but I have heard that this one's delicious. So we're going to try that. And then we also got like a regular chocolate croissant because Rob always likes his chocolate croissants. Yes, indeed. Is this chocolate? No, no, this is the mascarpone. So it has like a little glaze and there's like a dusting, I think, of chocolate. I didn't get too cheese yet. Not too cheesy? Oh, I didn't get too cheese yet. Oh. Oh. We'll try a side bite. Good. It's weird. It's just a layer of different textures. Mm -hmm. Which of them like all four. Cause I don't know if you guys know, but Ferrero is like one of my favorite, my favorite chocolate. And it has a bunch of different layers. So I'm gonna eat this on the way over. Since our first video check-in today, it got suddenly very, very windy and cold. So I had to bust out my scarf, and now I look. Very bundled. This guy is not bundled, but he's always hot. One of the sites that we passed on our strolls around the city was, I believe it's their version of the Arc de Triomphe. Um, there were a bunch of corgis randomly, also some construction that we were strolling through. So sorry if this part's not that pretty. Oh, there we go. Oh, dang. Creamy. Guys, but so just <laughs> having a good time at the park this morning. Had some croissants. We're gonna go up there. To the fountain at Stella Park. Oh, there's a kid over here. 
Okay guys, so had another afternoon of sleeping. Cause felt not so good again. Starting to get like the tiredness and the fatigue um, and the stuffiness, but took some more meds after having a nap. And now we're off to recycle some stuff and then go see a fountain light show and grab some dinner. And then we'll come home and get ready for our flight tomorrow morning. The fountain light show was aight. I mean, if you really gotta go see it, go see it. But I think at one point I just looked at Joss and we both knew it was mediocre. <laughs> Walking down a path of fountains down the Plaza de España. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. It's Plaza. <laughs> kind of cold. Are you cold? Yeah. That's a first. Okay. This guy is not very cold usually. <laughs> Alright guys, we are here with some food. What do you got on Um, I have some, I think it's a mushroom cream pasta with some chicken and a little pound of parmesan. And this is, this is standard. <laughs> I did spaghetti with marinara, with seafood and shrimp and mussels. Yeah. Mussels and added uh, meatballs. Standard stuff. Right? Um, I was told dulce de leche with milk and cream. So this, the girl who took our order made her recommendation. This is just fun. <laughs> yeah, no, it reminds me of something too, but I can't tell what it is. It is this one. It's not as sweet as Filipino food. Kind of like hers is better. I like mine better. Goodbye, entering room with that light. Goodbye, plant. Goodbye, bathroom. I said goodbye. Bathroom, overhead shower, goodbye. Goodbye sink, goodbye kitchen, goodbye stove, goodbye drying rack, goodbye champagne glasses with LED lights on the bottom. Goodbye refrigerator. Oh, I forgot, goodbye refrigerator. Goodbye bed where I sleep in or slept in by a table. Goodbye surround sound system. Goodbye projector. Goodbye IKEA lights that you can turn on and off and switch colors. Tungsten and LED. And make dimmer or brighter. Goodbye. Goodbye apples that we haven't eaten yet. Bye room. Don't go in there. Last leg. Was it worth it? 
surprised Alana. I think yes, like despite all the things that like didn't go according to plan, like I think every time that you go outside of your your personal bubble of comfort to experience like a new culture or like go to a new place that you haven't seen before and like learn about new people and you know a new place i feel like that's always it's always worth something it's always worth it's always worth the trip despite the hardship or the hardship that might come along with it um and then in terms of like our personal experience whether or not it was worth it if i would go back um i would totally go back i would come back just for the churros even or that little stall in the market that had that like squid that was really good and the the big langostino lobster thing that was really good too yeah i think i'll definitely agree with uh what josh said and i, I think anytime you go to a new area is just a lot of new things to uh, uh see and that changes your perspective on things and um despite the fact that everything uh you know went wrong not everything but a lot of things went wrong and a lot of our plans were were uh, um, compromised um you know we still did things out there and um yeah it was just a, a really beautiful place and i think i told her once that i i think i go back it just a in a or for just oh just to redo and like to see things that we maybe didn't get to see mm. and then also just to you know double check your perspective of, like against our previous experience just because you know it was dotted with a couple of things that didn't go as planned and you know that shouldn't sour you on on a place just because of like one isolated incident mm. Um, you made it this far. Thanks for watching. Uh, that that was our Barcelona trip. Mm -hmm. I hope I hope you had a good time. Um, I don't know when the next time we are all collectively gonna go be able to travel, but hopefully soon. But hopefully safely. Hopefully Iceland next, maybe. Hopefully um, Iceland next. We'll see. Yeah. But we'll see how 2020 goes. Hang in there, fam. Hang in there. See you guys. <laughs>